Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stratocast. We're changing up the format, as you can tell. Every video is going to start out with a little disclaimer like this, a little audio disclaimer, telling you what the video is about. On today's episode, I go over to Vancouver and visit my best bud in the whole world, Brendan Bruce. We talk about going to Toy Traders in Langley. We talk about going to a contact festival at the end of the year. We talk about going to a stacked festival in April. We also talk about Aquaman, DC Films' latest attempt at a movie. Me and Bruce haven't seen each other in a few months, so basically we're just shooting the shit and we're catching up and we're just trying to have a good time. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. Roll the intro. Well, give him the guns. Gotta give him the guns. We're done. We're done. Give him the guns, guys. Bam. Uh, we gotta give him the guns, guys. Bam. So right. peace. Thanks, guns. Logan. Guns. Boom. Fist. Boom. Gun. And uh, let's give him the guns real quick. Bam, bam, bam. Logan. The guns. Logan. Logan. Oh, give him the guns, you loser. I'm non-violent. <laughs> I'm pacifist. I will bazooka your ass. <laughs> cool. Alright. Cheers, bud. We're here. Cheers. Yep. Another episode of Stratocast. It's been a little while. Yep. We've been separated. Uh, when did you move? When's the last Stratocast mm-hmm. that we did together with Faber, right? Yeah, it was the one with Faber, and I moved December 15th. Yeah, and we wanted to do one before you left with Logan, but we didn't get around to it, unfortunately. Yeah, it's tough when a moving schedule gets so freaking busy, and then other people's lives, and, and Logan's impossible to get a hold of. Logan's impossible to get a hold of. guy doesn't have a cell phone. He yeah. only has a landline, and sometimes he's not even on Facebook, so it's really hard to get a hold of that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a, a digital nomad. Digital nomad, but I respect him for it. Yeah, I get. Fuck, man, I wish I could do that. Yeah, me well, too. I mean, I, I'm sure I could. It's such like a silly thing to say. I wish I could go without a cell phone because yeah. the only thing stopping me is not having a cell phone. The last podcast we did was all for you because uh, we all we all wanted to watch Eyes Wide Shut together, but yeah. because you were over here, we all obviously couldn't get together. Yeah. So we decided to just do a podcast, so it was like we were together. I felt it. I right? felt like I was there. Yeah. So that's awesome. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you appreciated it. Um, but today, um, yeah, we're just getting together. We're get, we're shooting the shit basically. Yep. We're getting to we're catching up. Um, he's been here for how long? You been here now? It's February. You've been here for like three months. Yeah, two and a half months, something yeah, like that. Over Christmas. Yep. How was Christmas here? Christmas here was sweet. I uh, it was almost lame because I was thinking about coming back to the island, seeing you guys, but it was just like oh, yeah. I I just left. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, it's just Christmas, just a couple days. Um, but my friend Shaq was in town. Yeah. And uh, Riley Hansen and his family all had me over for Christmas. And, you know, I'm a huge proponent, like, because you, you're like my family, but mm-hmm. we're friends, right? I, I'm just a huge believer that your family is who you make it. And it was um, the fact that I had people to best keep buds. me keep best, bu- best buds. Uh, the fact that I had people keep me company and, you know, welcome me into their home on Christmas Day was, like, it was super sweet. That's awesome. Free and then, food. And then after Christmas, a few days after, I guess, we did hang out for Contact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went to Contact, and that was the best. We wanted to do a podcast about it, but we were just too exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, what I did do, though, is I was going to make two videos. I made one video, and I, and I was going to post it on YouTube, but a bunch of it got censored and muted, so I took it off, and then mm-hmm. I put it on Facebook, but it still got censored and muted. So I kind of took that a little personally. Yeah. And I didn't end up making the second one because I'm like, is it just going to happen again? And that's that, that really bummed me out. Yeah. But, but I'm going to make a video this month, and uh, well, this one anyway, and hopefully another one. Well, that vlog, you spent a good, like... I spent a lot of time on how, it. How much time? Oh, probably like well, probably like a week. It, t- it took me like a week at le- until I had to finish it. And I probably spent like three or four hours on it like almost every night, like three hours. Because like... I did it and then like I didn't like the whole thing so I just scra- I kind of restarted from scratch. Yeah. And like the whole intro I like filmed I didn't even use. Mm. So I just went totally different. So, yeah. So yeah. And it, it to, took be, some time. to be clear they censored it because the music? The music apparently yeah. yeah. So what? So it seemed, I was really upset about it because I mean I paid money to go to this event and I paid money and I recorded it with my phone that I paid money for from my own perspective and then I just made a video about it and posted it, and then they just muted parts of it, and mm-hmm. I just don't know why. Yeah. And, it, and it's not like, it's not like it was an actual song. Even the, the weird parts, that the weird the weird part is the parts that they did censor, it wasn't even like a song. Mm. It was just like, noise. basically just noise. EDM noise. Yeah. Which is really dumb. Yeah, that is strange. Um, Logan was talking about that. He said they, it's like, algorithmically. Yeah. Like, take Apparently out- the music algorithm is just... Top notch or something. Yeah, yeah, which definitely makes sense, especially for songs like lyrics, like yeah. lyrical compositions. But it must have just been super frustrating because, like you said, you did a, you did all that time and you scrapped the one. But um, yeah, 
you know, and also only being able to put it on Facebook. I know that's not really the platform you're trying to get into as much yeah, yeah, as you're yeah. trying to more be in YouTube. But I just wanted, I, I just wanted it so we could look back on it anyway. Mm -hmm. But but I couldn't even like look back on the best parts. I mean, I could because I still have the video on my laptop. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't show everybody. It just, it just was a cool event, and I was like, I was like kind of promoting the event. I'm like this was a, uh, this is when I was talking in the. Uh, in the narration, I'm like, this is a dope event. Like, everybody should go if they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how many raves have you been to now? This is going to be th like your third show, so right? One, two, three. Yeah, I guess that was third. And then, then I'll go, and that was huge for you. Too. Yeah, it was like, massive. It was, it was really like awesome. the lineup was like bigger than you know any lineup you've ever really oh, been to. It was so I couldn't believe I was seeing a Skrillex and Galantis. Yeah. We were so excited for like, oh, it was the best. And BTSM was amazing. Yeah. 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 And we're going to go see BTSM, and then we're going to see Excision in April for my birthday. Yeah. At 420. So, um... What, Very excited. <laughs> it, it's kind of... This one's kind of... I get a lot of self-satisfaction out of this, because before Strat started going to all these, he was, like, super nihilistic about mm. going to the events, and just... Very be, negative. You know, just being a negative, and it's cool. I, I think we all do it, but... It's especially funny with you because you like you 10x that shit. You like, yeah, I like it. you're the Grinch when it comes to things sometimes. Or Squidward. So so or Squidward. Yeah, Squidward's a better example. Yeah, I love Squidward. Uh, the Krabby Patty example. <laughs> yes. Um. So what's what's been your favorite thing about it, man? Um. Well, the music is just fun. I like to dance. I mean, I've always I I've dancing. always liked to dance. Anybody yeah. who knows me knows that I like to dance. I can vouch for this, yes. Right? Yeah. But um, so that's uh, that's really fun. I I'm not the best dancer at these things for some reason. I notice. I feel like I can dance better, but it's fun to dance. See, I feel like I'm an awesome dancer in the moment, and then I watch your videos, and I'm just like, I'm just jumping. Yeah, but me too, basically. <laughs> yeah, but but it was fun as fuck. That's yeah. for sure. And there's some people that are definitely good dancers. And I'm like, oh, so jealous. I would like to take dance lessons. I really would. Yeah. One day. One day. I I think I will. Yeah, what was the what was the highlight of the uh, contact for you? Because it was so it's a two. Yeah, that's Yeah, they had a great performance. It was a two-day festival. Um, it's inside BC Place, which, you know, we have fond memories there. Uh, yes. You know, we played football there and whatnot. And, you know, the whole experience for you to go downtown, like, you haven't spent a lot of time in Vancouver. So it's kind of like, it's kind of a huge event for you. It was my, yeah, se it was my second contact. Yeah, it's always fun to go to Vancouver and uh, coming out. And I remember the, the highlight might have been, like, the second day because when we lost our car keys... We lost our car keys. Bruce lost our car keys all by himself, unfortunately. Yes. He can uh, wear that. Um, but And I even got I got him losing the car keys oh on my video, God. actually, and I was going to put it in the second video, but the second video was going to like mainly uh, like highlight the Chainsmokers, because yeah. I really liked their set. Yeah, yeah, I know And they were did. like the biggest name there, so I feel like that would, that would definitely get censored, most of their stuff. Even yeah. though a lot of Skrillex's stuff didn't, but like a six minute portion of the video, I'm pretty sure did. That's horrible. Which was like, ooh. Right? Yeah, or like four minutes or something. Well, what was brutal is like I dropped my car keys, right? And then there's this group of people that like picked it up and gave them back to me, and I was just like, oh wow, yeah. like dodged a bullet there. I, like, I literally, I have the video of this guy like coming up to Bruce while he's dancing hard as fuck, and like taps him on the shoulder, and he's like, Do you, "Is this yours?" Yeah. And he's like, "Oh my god, my car key!" And he puts it in his pocket, and then I guess it just falls out of his Here, pocket. Here's, again. The, here's the thing. So I have um I have these Lululemon shorts, and I guess the right side there's holes in the pockets, but I didn't think like there's there's three pockets and one has a zipper. Yeah. So I thought that was the most secure, and then yeah, just the other. Very recently, I found out that had a hole in it, and yeah, I'm just like, funny. "What a useless pair of fucking shorts." Fortunately, we had friends in high places in Vancouver. And we were able to get just a taxi over to a buddy's house to crash. Yeah, that was sweet because, like, it would have been so much worse. And also, day one was, like, pouring rain when we got out of the show. Like, we when we got out of for was day it? one... Oh, yeah, it was pouring rain. We basically ran to a cab, just gunned it right away. Oh, remember with, really. Ma with Matt Toombach. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we got out there. Like, we were literally out of the building and in a cab in, like, five minutes. I was yeah. talking to another friend who said she was, like, 45 minutes to just get out of the uh, building. So we left, like... Just oh, yeah, we, left a good time. we left just a little bit early for Skrillex. Mm -hmm. um, just after Bangarang. Exa classic. Yeah, exactly. If you if you guys watch the video, you'll know. It's on Facebook. <laughs> 
And uh, but the second day when we had to walk, we had to walk from BC Place to Granville, which was like 20 minutes, and it wasn't raining. And we ran into Hayden Gullins. Yeah, we ran into an old football friend, Hayden Gullins, who's in the video production business. He mm-hmm. takes amazing photos for like all these awesome DJs these days. Mm-hmm. And I was like, just oh, big fan of your work. You're doing awesome. And it was good. Yeah, it was really good to see Hayden. Yeah, shout, out, shout out to Hayden. Shout Gullins. out to Hayden Gullins. Um, it, it was just a fun night overall. I mean. Like, Fun experience. I like all the DJs. I liked, And Borgor, I was super excited to see Borgor the second day. Yeah, yeah, that was my... So that was also awesome. That was my third time seeing him. So um, shout out. I really, uh, I guess my favorite thing about it, like, there's so much, like, uh, you obviously love the music. That's probably primarily what you go for. Yeah, music is good. And I just never, um, anytime I'm at a rave, you know, depending on the venue and where it is, I just find predominantly there's never, uh, I never get that kind of connection of, of positivity yeah, flo- say, floating really in the nice. room. People are extremely nice. They're all there for the common thing. Uh, You know, there's obviously, um, you know, at any type of event like this, you're going to get drugs and alcohol, and sometimes that gets overdone. But I see more often than anything people... uh, people helping each other out that's true uh, like you know i you know i see drunk people passed out and in, in an alleyway when i go downtown and their friends kind of leave them every now and then yeah uh but at these things you know like obviously there's medical staff but i always see people trying to talk other people through whatever bad time they could be having yeah and, and that's just nice because that's just respect for the the whole deal respect for the people respect for the the venue itself and the, yeah. you know it's just a it's a vibe i like going with i try to just definitely completely just have my own shit together and just not rely basically on anybody else yeah i feel like that's responsible enough yeah oh yeah definitely yeah, right my but thing is like asking for water I, tr- I try to help as much as i can but sometimes i'm just not very helpful what, what can i say yeah but uh i i i can help no i, I, help I, I, I i'm so yeah i help people with shoulder rides there you go i, I, get, I <laughs> cannot help i'll, I'll get shoulder. people Fuck on my shoulders that. see I, I can i'm sorry sorry to interrupt but like I could be, I could be a dick. Some people would have asked me for a shoulder bite, and I look like I'm huge. But I have a terrible back, yeah. and I am just could not do it. Yeah. So like sometimes I just gotta refuse. And I'm like, fuck no. I don't uh, know. I, I've hurt myself giving a shoulder yeah. ride before. I've, I've seen you do some dangerous shoulder rides. Yep. Straight up. And <laughs> Straight he, does, up. he does it with everybody. He does it with, 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 with big people, small people, men, women, everyone. Just he'll get he'll, 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 he'll throw him up there. Just get right into it. <laughs> Yeah, it's very exciting when he does it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, I just like the whole experience. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, very excited for Excision. Yeah. So and like that weekend, the next weekend, we're basically probably going to see each other. Hmm. Is going to be, um, we're going to go hang out for 420. Mm-hmm. The first 420 that weed is legalized in Canada. We're going to hang out downtown Vancouver. We're going to go see Excision. And then that weekend, we're probably going to go see the new Avengers movie, Endgame. Mm. Which we've been like anticipating for over ten Huge. years. Huge. So how can that not be the best weekend ever? Yeah, it's nice when things kind of just line up like that. It's yes, a, it's it his birthday weekend. Um, my first four twenty in Vancouver. I'm super excited for that because yeah. like I've been smoking weed. Um, I won't say I'd say more than like not smoking weed, but like yeah. on and off still. Yeah. In a way, on and off since I was seventeen. So you know, uh, it's uh, it's helped me through some stuff. Definitely helped me recently. Yeah. Um, I just got my wisdom teeth pulled. Oh nice. And yeah. oh my. Oh, so nice. it, the worst part is like, uh, there's many worst parts, but one of the worst parts was the painkillers they give you. Kind of just leave you pretty loopy. Yeah. Pretty out of it. You know, your appetite's really low. I ate uh, half a marijuana cookie, mm. uh, to, and I just kind of eat them in halves, and apparently I could have eaten them in thirds, because I was definitely stoned. I would have to but, eat them the whole thing. Yeah, so yeah, 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 up. definitely you would. I would. And, uh, yeah, I found, I was also using the painkillers as well, because I just, to be honest, I just wanted to be, like, sedated. I didn't want to feel, like, any pain from, you know, the swelling and inflammation, because yeah. it's just fucking horrible. But uh, it was nice, because it encouraged me to eat, and encouraged me to, like, do things, not just lay in bed. Uh, opposed to the painkillers where I found myself just like napping. Yeah, I and, saw you just watching uh, podcasts and yeah. watching some uh, cartoons in here. Mm-hmm. It was on, your, on your Snapchat, I'm like, classic. He's just fucking kind of rest. Yeah. Watching some good shit. Yeah, I got a few days off work. I, I, I didn't get like any swelling because I just iced my face so much because like I just know that's the way to go. I mean, Petey, one of our old buddies, once basically cured a torn ACL from icing it and played football that season. So, ice is important. Uh, I'm like, if he can do that, then I should be able to ice my wisdom teeth mm. into submission. Just put that. Yeah, yeah, nice. That's my philosophy no, I think on that's it. smart. Ice packs, I need, a, I need a good ice pack. I just use ice for, like, I've been having injured ankles and shit, and I just need to ice them. But uh, 
my, everything I use to ice them sucks, other than putting them in an ice bucket. Yeah. That's the way to go, but yep. I don't do that. I was going to ask you, uh, how was how was the Super Bowl over here? What did you do for the Super Bowl? So the Super Bowl, I was going to go to Josh's, but it was the first nice. day of all the snow we had over the last few that days. Was the first day? Yeah, and uh, I went to, like, back out of my driveway, and then, like, just even slightly pressing on the gas, my car started, like, going sideways, and I'm like, nope. Oh, so cool. I... Excuse me. I managed to get myself back into the driveway. Uh, I streamed the game online, and I didn't have a hiccup the entire time, so that, that all worked wonderfully. Nice. Um, I very much enjoyed the Super Bowl, and it was a Super Bowl that I'd say is like the highest, criti- like most highly criticized Super Bowl in the last five to ten years. Yeah, I want to talk about the the criticism of the Super Bowl. Everybody's bitching about how boring it was and stuff. But like really, I mean, it was what? It was a one score game. It, yeah. Was, what, do you, like, what more do you want? Well, it was a two score game. It was thirteen. Wasn't it was, to, it was game? thirteen to three, so ten point differential. Okay, but most of the time it was a one score game. Yeah. Well, mo- yeah, for most of the game it's three. And then it was tied for most of the game, right? And mm-hmm. then, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know what people could possibly complain about. It was so good if you like defensive plays. People say there was no plays, but there were like really good defensive plays. The coverage yeah. that these corners were going. That were, that they were up against. It was just fucking awesome. Yeah, special teams was playing well too. Yeah. There were some huge punts. I think uh, it, it's kind of like a running joke, but they broke the record for the longest punt in the game. Yeah, that was a good punt. Yeah, and it's like you know special teams like like for example Seattle's punter. I think his name's Ed Ed Dixon. He had, you know gave Seattle's defense so many good chances throughout the season because he put his backspin on the football, mm. often pins guys within the and ten to five yard line, punter. and you get that field position, and, and that's what really gets things going, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah, field position is huge. It was really good uh, coaching matchup too. Like I said, if you like coaching matchups, and um, you point out something really good, the whole game, like Bill Belichick was just so composed mm-hmm. and like kept the run game going. And everything was, but like, but like Tom Brady did have to throw quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He he dropped back. He was against a furious pass rush, and, and I mean, like, really, really intense pass rush. Dominic like Sue did pretty good. He he probably had the best game on their defensive line. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought. And I, I didn't I didn't see uh, Aaron Donald as much as I thought I would. I thought it would be his game. Like, if it was if he balled out, they would win. Yeah, and basically, it, definitely with that. Like, he's amazing. The MVP two years in a row. Mm, um, so good. I, and I the thing that yeah impressed me from the Patriots and and the Rams as well. They didn't seem to do. Do a bad job of it is uh, they just kept their composure throughout the whole t- game and it was just realizing what the score was hey we're in a three nothing game both mm. these teams have excellent kickers mm. that can make 45 yard pluses all day yeah you know we're in a three nothing three three game why why throw a lower percentage play and, and you know some people say well hey well, they weren't really playing to win they were playing not to lose and i would i'm fine playing not to lose like why am I risking turnovers, throwing the ball deep yeah. when I have no when I have a Julian Edelman as my number one receiver? Yeah, and he balled who, out. Who balled out? But yeah, they were working crossing routes. They worked the run game so you could draw those linebackers in on play actions and, and both down defenses and distance. just played really well. Mm-hmm. Like that, what what the uh, the Rams got picked picked off Tom Brady like for opening drive. Yeah, that was yeah. sweet. Yeah, that it, was badass. It choked me out. Yeah, <laughs> I was exactly. like, God damn it! Yeah, that was badass. And Stephen Gilmore got a really good pick later in the he game. He closed the game out with his interception. Right? Yeah, and um. Just everybody played really good. There was like big hits on Gronkowski when he was about to catch a ball, but they just defended him really well. Yeah. Just everything was defended really well, and it was like, oh do, man, another like. Do three you think Gronk's gonna retire this season? I thought he would, but he probably will. Yeah. He's, he, I think won, he's like, gonna, gonna announce it like in the next week or so. Whether he's, he's been playing for a long time, why well, he she should he doesn't have to play much longer. I, he's he's got a lot of well, damage what, he's on his a, body. He's a three time Super Bowl champion, yeah. and you know like he's best tight end. Uh, he, ever, I'd say he, I'd say he goes down in the top three tight ends of all time with Tony Gonzalez and uh, Aaron Hernett. No, I'm just kidding. With uh, who's the other guy? Antonio Gates. Uh, Antonio Gates. There's, there's a few other people, but like, maybe Kellen Winslow. Like I don't. I, I put Gronk ahead of Winslow all day. Yeah, like, like old Kellen Winslow. There's an old Kellen Winslow that was pretty good, but okay. yeah, probably ahead of him. Of probably course. probably with those three people, and then your up and comer is Travis Kelsey. And, Travis and uh, another thing that kind of choked me out. So like one thing Strats and I had was like, whether it was on social media or in conversation with people, or pe- you know people just had bad things to say about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, now let's rewind a week. And two weeks technically, and go to those conference championships were so fun. Yeah, like, they were the it's crazy. They were so fun. So it's just like you know, it, what do you it, want? It, it's such like an entitlement thing of like always entertain mm. me. Like this is the biggest event, and it's just like 
I appreciate when things don't go to script. Yeah. It, it kind of feels like it yeah. kind of feels nice. Like, oh, we're having a pretty chill Super Bowl. It's like, well, that's the game of football. It's yeah. like it's not always this high scoring extravaganza of touchdown production. It's just sometimes it's a technical it's game. It's a chess match. It's yeah. a technical game. Yeah, it was good to see. I don't know why people just had to like they wanted to be spoon fed just big scores and stuff. But like I said, there's there's a whole side of the game that's called defense, and there was yeah. it was a really good defensive game. But I usually just don't see that. I don't want to see people just running through the defense. I mean, is that fun? Kind of not. It yeah, would, I mean, it, it has its ups and downs. Like you can appreciate. Like I really appreciate a lot of the big hits. The, the, like I love defensive line. I like offensive line. Like everybody was doing. Like it was just a great game for me to watch. Maybe because yeah. I just appreciate a lot of the technical parts of football mm -hmm. more than some people. But it was a good game, and mm -hmm. like I really appreciated watching the defense ball out. Yeah, oh, definitely. And uh, six times, six times Super Bowl champions for which, New England. Yeah, that's retarded. Which is huge. Yeah. Um, Seahaw who, who did the Seahawks lose to in the playoffs? Um, Dallas. <sighs> yeah, yeah, they lost to Dallas. And yeah, Dak Prescott did pretty good that game. Better than I thought Z he would Zeke do. Zeke did the best. Zeke was running oh, all over yeah, you guys. He's, he's a monster. Yeah. God but I, I think Seattle's got some exciting things in the pipeline. Dude, me too. We did pretty good this year. Chris Carson was really good. I mean, Doug Baldwin, I've been saying for years, is just so awesome. Russell Wilson is so awesome. It doesn't even make sense. He's, like, yeah. he's like per perfect. I would so, love to so go to C a Seattle game, but, like, right now I'm in this mode me of, like... Me too. Fuck, I want to go to Seattle game so bad. I'm in this mode of, like, prioritizing my events of what I want to be doing, and right now I'm in this, like, huge music festival mode because these yeah. things are, like, kind of expensive... Depending yeah. on where you go and how often you go, and it appears I'm going uh, very far and we very spent a lot of money on those music festivals in a very short period of time. We paid for Contact, and then we paid for Shambhala. Stacked and Shambhala. And then we paid for Stacked. Yeah, that's over a thousand dollars, and uh, I mean the experience is well worth it. Um, but you know, my whole point is, I think, you know, to an ex extent of of maintaining discipline as well as indulgence is. You know, where, where do you want to invest your time and money? You can only typically get so much time off work, and then a lot of people typically only have so much money. So, you know, you have to kind of pick and choose what you want to be doing in that chapter of your life. And I yeah. feel like, you know me, I, I've traveled the world quite a bit, and I, I really miss traveling. I'm bit hard by the travel bug. I'll see mm. people's Instagram yeah. posts, and I'm like, fuck, I want to go to Greece me or something. Um, but it, it's just a chapter thing, and right now I'm in the chapter of my life where I want to be doing this, and... Uh, uh, where I'm kind of tying that all in is I want to be in a chapter of my life where I want to go to like a good football game or do a big sports weekend and you know cool. spend a good 1500 bucks on trying to see a, a college game a, a NFL game a basketball game and a hockey game all in. because like it's just uh it's just an awesome thing and it's all it's an all experience a baseball right? game would be fun to go to a baseball game if, too. if the Blue Jays came to Seattle and then I could see a Seattle game and a, and a Blue Jays game yeah and Seattle, I mean Seattle's looking to buy a basketball team too and a hockey team, as a matter of fact. So don't. Eh, I guess I could go to them. I mean, a live is more fun anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of hockey personally. No, that's fair. But basketball is fun. Yeah. But I, I don't know. But I just don't know anything about it either. Oh yeah, I'm the worst basketball player ever. Um, I don't know anything about the players. I don't know anything about the league. <laughs> other than LeBron is the best ever. No. But but it's debatable because, <laughs> because, there's, because there's Michael Jordan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else are we gonna talk about? Well. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about setbacks because oh, we've, been, we've yeah. both been going through some of those. So yeah. I'll kind of let you talk about what your setbacks. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll start. That's a good point. So yeah, this this February, this February, I, I, the last two months to February and January, I really have been a setback. Before those, like the holiday season, mm -hmm. I think I was like two. I was like two hundred thirty pounds, which was like the best I've ever weighed. It was probably like the lightest I've weighed in a long time. So I was like feeling pretty good about that. But then, like, over those two months, I think I weighed myself, and I was, like, two, I was, like, 258. So, like, I, would, I gained, like, 30 pounds, which is crazy. Yeah. So, I needed to get back after it, and I was, like, going hard on February. I was calling it fit February. Nice. And I was even going to make a little video about it. So, like, the first, like, 10 days of February, I went to the gym every day with, like, or the pool, or I went for a run. You did something. And I was going, and I went, I did something, and then stretched, yeah. and then I was eating pretty good, not having any sugar or anything. But um, but then but then my back just started to kill just out of nowhere, mm. and then it just and the snow just came down out of mm. nowhere, and it was so much snow, and then I'm like, and then it really sucked. So then I like bought a bunch of snacks when the snow came down because I thought we were like gonna be trapped forever. Yeah. And I ate all the snacks like so quick, and I bought more snacks and the snacks. Snacks are the worst, man. Yeah. But it wasn't sugar though, but it was very salty and delicious. Yeah. But I did buy cookies, so that's sugary. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a motherfucker. Yeah, I don't and I've been drinking a lot too. And then I started drinking alcohol, which is not good. 
So yeah, I've just had a beer, as you can see. I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna drink a Smirnoff in like five minutes here. You're gonna see it. <laughs> so yeah, I've been drinking more than usual. So yeah, setbacks. But okay. after I get back from this vacation, we're going hard as fuck. Yeah. We did go to the gym while I was here. What's your uh, What's your mind like when you're going through these setbacks? Like, um, for me, like, I'll, I'll... sometimes I'm I'm like pretty hard on myself at times, but then I'm like, oh, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I I know I can get back on the horse and just hit it hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really not a big deal, and I, I know coming here talking to you about stuff is always nice. Yeah. It's like a good refresher of like, what am I doing? What am I doing it for? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like I said, we went to the gym. We had a great time. It felt great. I hit the bag. Yeah. We, we hit the heavy bag, which was nice because at my gym, we don't have like shit. We had like a really, really lame, stupid stand-up one that sucked. Didn't hang. It yeah, it was up. like $30. I saw the same one at Walmart. It was yeah. like $30. Piece, and piece like, of crap. It felt like if you hit it hard enough, you'd probably knock it over. Yeah, piece of crap. And I love that shit. I love getting into it because it's such good cardio for me and it just feels it, great. It's cardio my shoulders and it's so much. Yeah, core, nice. My shoulders hurt so much, so it's nice to always move my arms, hmm. and it just feels really nice. Yeah. So these, this is really nice to hit and kick because I do like kicking. So it was nice to actually hit something, actually hit something for once. Yeah, no Felt kidding. really good. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. So I want to get back after right when I get home. <clears throat> and, and and the snow is basically gone. I feel like so that's nice too. Yeah. So like the setbacks are pretty much clear for you. Yeah. You can start hitting it again. And I hurt my ankle at one point too, and I had to like heal that up. And I've been going to the steam room and like stretching it with like resistance bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So just like stuff like that, injuries just suck. Injuries are just so depressing sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know the an injury is brutal because it's a physical and a mental thing. Yeah. You you get hit with both of them, and it's really really tough. Um. I guess. Uh, I guess for me, like, I've been going through some setbacks, too. Uh, one was an ankle injury for me. Yeah. Uh, so I've been doing jujitsu throughout the month of January. And uh, I'll talk about that a little bit before I get into setbacks because it was super cool. Uh, my favorite thing about it was, and I know this has been a common theme on this podcast, was the, the community. And it was mm. a very helpful community. It was, um, at the time, it was a, it was a new year. Uh, so I got a month free membership with my gym sign up. And uh, a lot of new people were there because of the new year. Yeah. And it was probably almost like a 60-40 a of experienced people uh, and newer jujitsu, okay. uh, newer white belts. And it was just, you know, any advice for anyone kind of thinking about it is absolutely do it. These people were just so quick to uh, offer me help, uh, nice. want to partner with me. You know, they know what you want to do. They know you want to get into it. They know that it's a sport that causes some pain. Uh, so, you know, you, you're not afraid to get hurt and you get a little banged up and it, it's kind of fun, right? It's yeah. a, it's a good, it's a good thing to suffer through. Um, so I was doing that and about three weeks into it, um, I'm also training for a marathon right now. Uh, there's one at the end of April yes, I was planning on running oh. and, uh, that might get, oh, that might, yeah, I know it's getting close. Uh, and there's one in September that I'm definitely running. Uh, so I was on an 11 kilometer run and right about at the six and a half mark uh i start like limping in my run and i'm like oh no maybe i'll walk for a bit my ankle is just trashed at this point uh so i, I, feel that. I, I find my way to you know it was either you're sweaty it's raining outside and you walk back an hour or you you know run on this hurt ankle for uh you know 25 half an hour mm. and uh i took the running uh portion and it, it did a number on my ankle I haven't been able to run since for about two and a half weeks. And uh, because my main goal has been the marathon, like this has been so huge for me in my head, I had to take that. Uh, I had one last week of jujitsu I couldn't take advantage of, uh, which kind of sucks. So um, that, that was a pretty huge setback for me. And then in addition, like I said, I have my wisdom teeth pulled. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's big too. So, um, and, and it's pretty much like, of course, like right as the ankle feels like it's about to be good to go, the wisdom teeth come out. It's snowing. I can't drive my car. Yeah. Uh, so there's just a bunch of things. I feel that during yeah, like, like I said, during those those holiday months, I I got a, uh, I hurt my I threw up my back. I had like really bad tonsillitis. I got mm. sick really bad. Yeah. Oh, uh, just it was the worst two months for some reason, and um, just gained a bunch of weight. Well, yeah. So and I, I think I think it's just the pizza that I've been eating at Panago. Yeah. Because I I was pretty good. I, I was always pretty. I was exercising throughout, even though I was sick and when I couldn't. And I was going to the steam room and stuff like that. But um, I guess, I think it's just my diet cat caught up to me a little bit. I'm trying to eat less pizza. Yeah. But it's free, so. Fair enough. Son of a bitch. 
Well, one of the, I guess, chips of advice I have is, uh, you know, when you're going through these setbacks and, and a lot of people get to a point of being hard on themselves, like mm-hmm. being just really tough on themselves. And it's almost, it's juxtaposed it that it's kind of a, a good thing because you're probably being hard on yourself because you have high expectations for yourself and you know you're capable of something and, you know, you're, pr- you're probably not being the hardest on yourself when you're, you're stagnant and you don't really give a fuck about it. Yeah. Right? When you just don't care and you're just, you're happy being in bed or happy playing video games on all day. Yeah. So the, the biggest thing I took away was, like, I did about what I could. You know, I, um, I tried to hit resistance bands on my ankles. I, I do some just stretching and just any little bit of something I could do to kind of keep myself active. Yeah. Uh, do my best to manage to eat okay food. Um, and just know that your setbacks aren't forever. Mm-hmm. You know, everything, everything's a pendulum. It will always swing one way or another, sometimes very drastically and throw your life out of it into complete chaos. Yeah. And, uh, sometimes the pendulum will swing the other way where your life is organized and orderly sometimes and, it feels and, and there, but there will always be <laughs> struggles within both that pendulum, right? Even when it's orderly, you'll want more of the order. You'll want more of this, of something. And when it's chaotic, you'll be like, uh, and you say you're really sick or your ankles hurt, you know, oh, I wish I didn't have a stuffy nose right now. I'm going to appreciate it when I don't. And uh, I wish my ankle was feeling better. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's always going to end. You just got to be patient with it and, and kind of look at the bright side of things. But yeah, I I just wanted to speak about that because like I can get super down on myself when when things aren't going my way. Yeah, I was down on the Tom's lightest because, like I said, it lasted over like a, it over it lasted like a week and a half. I feel like and that's a so long was, time to be sick. So it was a lot, and I did a lot of stuff. Like I was one of the st- I went to the steam room like, probably like three days in a row and just tried to sweat it out, and that like usually actually helps a lot. Like I got over it in like two days one time because of like that method. I got like some oil of oregano and I was like choking that shit down. Yeah, that's stuff. That I, I've never I tried it, but does it make your mouth just taste disgusting? Yeah, it's kind of it's just it's 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 tough. It's like it's spicy. It's hot as fuck. It's <laughs> spicy and hot as fuck. I heard it's good for you though. No, it is good for you. So I have that, which is nice. That's a little preventative, um, for for the future. But um, it was just too late. It just didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. So eventually, I had to go to the doctor, and I hate going to the doctor. It never they never do anything. All they do is give me medication. So that's what they did. They mm-hmm. gave me medication. And they're like, and they gave me these giant pills, and I literally can't even swallow. I can't do anything. I can hardly drink water without choking. And they gave me these fucking huge pills. Yeah. And I'm like, like swallow like four of these. They're probably suppositories. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't even talk. Like, do you hear me right now? I sounded like an idiot. Like, I can't yeah. even describe how I sounded. I get, I could impersonate it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> I'm my name's Ryan, something like that. Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. It's, but it's worse. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, they're like swallow these, and I That's couldn't funny. do it. So I tried to swallow them, and I was like dying, like choking, because I can't swallow. And like the like me trying to fucking swallow these pills as hard as I could, like made like my tonsils like explode in my mouth, because that apparently I don't know if anybody's ever had like tonsillitis, but yeah, your tonsils explode. I feel like sometimes. <laughs> and I've never had like, tonsillitis. Then it tastes like shit in your mouth, and you want to throw up. So I had to like fucking get mints immediately run to the store get mints fuck it was the worst but it felt but you feel better almost instantly so that was nice so i did like shove stuff down my throat forcefully to get better which is weird medication didn't do shit yeah i got a i got a guy that at work that always talks about like um and this is just kind of off the rack because you're talking about going to the doctor but uh talking about like how canada should have some sort of privatized medical sector uh, be, I, I don't know how hard it is for you to see a doctor, but now my, I don't, I live in a place where I don't have my family I have doctor. Do- I don't have a doctor. So you just have to go into a walk-in. Yeah. So how's your experience with that? It wasn't too bad, but like I knew what they were going to do. So like, I wish I could just like go to like get my, the, get the stuff that they want me to get. Yeah. yeah. I just the kept, I just kept all the antibiotics that they gave me. I didn't really take any. Yeah. So I'm just going to save it for next time, I guess. Yeah. So oh that's yeah. Nice. That's very smart. So whatever. Yeah. Cause like I want, I it's not like I could be affording to go to a privatized doctor or anything. I don't like going to the doctor at all, so I just try to stay out of there as much as I can, so whatever. But it's just, uh, I remember my last time going to the walk-in, it's just like this this whole, it was a two and a half hour wait for something very small, and I just, I always hear about people talking about going to the doctors for things that are just, that are really tiny and like probably something yeah. you shouldn't be going to the doctor for, and I th- because of that, I kind of believe that there should be a somewhat like people with more money should have the ability to pay for different levels of healthcare, and I think that would motivate doctors to open up their own practice and and kind of put a 
a good bit of capitalism into a market that's uh, that's all government regulated and everything. Yeah. I just think that there's some uh, sections of our healthcare that it you know get taken advantage of, not necessarily on purposely, but uh, it it kind of slows down the whole thing. And it, I just just extrapolated tangent, but it's just something this guy and I have been talking yeah. about a little well, bit. They make at work. you pay for most of the shit anyway. Like they make me pay for my medication. Oh yeah, yeah, medication they make you pay for. It's um, kind of expensive. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have benefits planned for that, but like for the most part, like our healthcare is pretty free. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, and and I only you know, waited an hour and a half in the walk-in. I feel yeah, like, so see, that's like, not that's, too bad. That's definitely not bad, you know. And but I'm not like complaining. Sucks. I'm not complaining about our healthcare system. I'm just. I was like, like sp- I just spit like every like two seconds though, mm-hmm. so I had like a little bucket that I just carried with me and sp- was spitting in. Gross. It was disgusting, and I felt like a loser. <laughs> and I'm like, I so I can't do anything, but like I don't know. My t- I was just like constantly filling up with so much saliva and i was yeah. like choking on it eventually so i had to spit it up yeah just the way it is and i was i'm like I'm sorry. I'm yeah disgusted. you definitely needed to see a doctor yeah i know but even though they didn't do anything it was just really just time and then me choking to death and then that healed me yep you could have probably just shoved any object down your throat yeah that's I should, what just that's, like, i should just ate something hard as like, my medical advice that's next time you get tonsillitis so i'll just like it'll be like that scene in um, cookies no 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 that scene in uh 21 jump street where they try to make each other <laughs> throw up but it will just be me trying to make you throw up oh my god yeah that's a good scene <laughs> i love that scene <laughs> um <sighs> speaking of scenes Lately, yeah, I've uh, I've been working a lot with my camera mm-hmm. since. The, what have you been doing since the snowfall? How's the snowfall affected you? Well, uh, my co-work has all been giving me ride to work, and my yeah, roommates because I can't drive with my car. Uh, I deliver pizza for work, so that's been a bitch for me. But I had most of the days off when I started the snow. But but I've had to work in the snow a few times. But the other day I could not go out at all. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been tough. Like the biggest challenges I've faced are with work because right now I'm working on an operations team that's responsible for the shipping and receiving both domestically and across the United States border. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's been tough kind of understanding what regions are, are hit worse because it's a polar vortex, right? Like a lot of people are getting hit with snow. It's not just yeah. the West coast. Um, and a lot of people work all spread out. Like, uh, some people live at the end of Chilliwack. So uh, me being 10 minutes away from work, I came in early one day and it was me and one other guy when it's normally a team of four or five uh, working the operations desk. And yeah, it was stressful. It, it was really stressful. Uh, you know, I, I'm still relatively new to this company. Been here for about five months and uh, it, it, it's fun though. Like it, it was stressful, but it was like a challenge and it felt like everyone got through it pretty well, which yeah. was uh, which was very nice. And yeah. Um, it's rewarding to go through the shit like it's it's kind of like it sucks being stressed out but like you get to learn something very important that everyone should learn in their life and then now how do we deal with stress when we're stressed how do we deal with pressure when we're underneath it yeah you know and uh so we have to deal with that at work with strangers or with people that uh, are not really in your in your circle and i think that pays big dividends to how am i going to deal with stress you know with my mom with someone who I have a more fragile, more delicate relationship with. And, mm. and you can use a lot of these little things, like some snow causing your, your work some delays and you not being able to deliver pizza as tools that you can learn into other avenues of your life and, and branch out and say, okay, well, th- how is this applicable, right? And it, it's kind of neat when your job can help your real life like that. And I think everyone's kind of does to an extent. It's just whether or not you want to look at the thing. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yes, the the pizza sucked. There was everybody was stressed out. My boss, we said okay, so Panago, okay, so we were the only people on the island that didn't close yeah. because of the snow. So yeah. we were just delivering pizza in the snow forever. And I, 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 the first day it snowed, I couldn't even make it there, so I called in. I'm like, I can't make it. And then the, one of the other days, I couldn't deliver pizza past six o'clock because it just and started coming down one day. Yeah. And um, I'm like, yeah, I can't go out. But then he still had like three other drivers going out. One guy worked like 13 hour a day because he opened and then they, he just like kept delivering pizza because they were busy, even though they were like, everything was like four hours late. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why don't you just go home? Just say you're done and it's snowing and you're done. You've worked for a bunch of hours. You're done. <laughs> go home. Because he's like, oh, I just can't. And I'm like, dude, go home. And then like the other guy That's had like brutal. the other guy had like a Ford F one fifty, and he was able to drive it. I don't know how that that other guy was able because he had like a BMW. I'm like, how are you driving? I'm like my car's fucked. Wasn't it an older one? I don't know. Okay, some of the front wheel drive would have been easier than rear yeah. wheel. That's for sure. Yeah, my car definitely wasn't going really anywhere. 
Um, I lost the ability to turn. I was going slow on pine. I turned a little bit, and I was just, like, going straight. Missed my turn. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll catch the next one. Yeah. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So I'm like, yeah, I can't really go anywhere anymore. I, I hardly made it back to Panago that, that what last time. But I made it home safe, so that was good. Oh, it's important everyone realizes the, uh, the, the seriousness of pizza. But, yeah, this guy didn't close. We were the only place that was open, and we were just so busy. So I was just doing dishes the whole night because I, I was the closer. So, yeah, that was retarded. It's pretty unfortunate, man. Like, and I know it's such a, this should be a well-known about thing, but, like, people that order food, when when the conditions are like that, like, yeah. it's too dangerous for me to go out, but it's not dangerous enough for other people to go out or, or whatever the thing is. And it's just, like, you know, that's that's not cool. Yeah, like, I, I'll, I'll, I know my rights anyway, and, like, I'll, like, I'll tell them, like, I can't go out, and, like, I don't want to go out. It's not safe out there and shit. Yeah. So, like, I don't care about, like, people that, yeah, some people are definitely just so ignorant. Pressing about safety is really tough. I remember, um, I, it was, like, one week before I moved, and there was, uh, they wanted me to move, move some lumber and just hand bomb it into a vehicle. And it wasn't that, it was, like, five or six, 70, 80 pound pieces of lumber, but they're really long. They're, like, 13 footers. Yeah, we can do it with two people. Yeah, and even then, though, it was just because, like, yeah, it was dude. a job for a forklift. Yeah. And we had a forklift, and uh, the driver just didn't feel skilled enough to get through the door, but I did. Yeah. Anyways, it was a week before I was moving, or only a few days, and I, I did not, I was like, I, you know, I don't want to do this. Like, yeah. I, I just don't want to throw, like, I was pretty much moving all by myself, mm-hmm. right? So I didn't want to throw my back out before my work. And yeah, my boss at the time pressured about it and like his exact words is like, you know, I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. And mm-hmm. I said, perfect, I don't feel comfortable, then you should do it yourself. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, and throughout the rest of that week, whether um, the, I kind of felt the situation was like, I'm leaving and this guy's being a dick to me because of that or whatever. But it could have very well been that incident and he just wanted to be an asshole to me. Mm-hmm. But it's a good thing I didn't continue to work at that specific location because he... Uh, it would have been shitty to just say, hey, I don't feel safe, and now your boss or manager treats you poorly because you don't feel safe doing a thing. Yeah. And it's like, oh. Yeah, I've I've thrown my back out just lifting dough out of, like, the dough bowl at my place, and I'm mm-hmm. like, I gotta get other people to lift the dough out because I just can't, and because I'm fuck, even though it looks like I can, but I'm like, dude, I throw my back out lifting that shit out all the time, like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, straight up. But um, the other thing with the snow, how it's, uh, the one day when I called in and I could not go to work... Uh, I decided to go take some pictures with my camera because mm-hmm. what I have been doing lately is I've just been trying to get more familiar with my camera because I, I have not been utilizing it uh, properly uh, the whole time I've been using it, basically. I'm, I'm an amateur. It's, it's, it's hard to learn all this camera stuff, as, as, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of stuff going on, so yeah. it's taking me a while to master it, especially photography. Photography is tough, but I've been going out and taking a lot of photos lately, and it's been fun, and I've uh, been getting some nice photos. And, um, and, and it's just been fun to learn. So I went out in the snow and to take some photos. It was one of the first days I got bundled up. I got my camera all covered up mm-hmm. and, um, and I went out there and I was going to take, uh, I was going to the pool to have a swim. So I went out, took some photos, went to the pool and then came back, take some more photos on the way back in the, in the forest and stuff and, and went home. And then, and then it was just coming down though. At one point I was all covered and I was just covered in snow. It was just sticking to me and sticking to the, like my covered camera. I was like, I just gotta get out of here. Yeah. And then when I got back, my lens was all fogged up my oh, shit no. was all fogged and i was like oh my god yeah and i thought i broke everything because like some snow like got on the camera i'm like maybe did it like seep in did it seep in the water like melted everything it's, it's all fogged oh it's broken i was so stressed out and then i had to go to work and i thought my camera was broken and, and your was, camera's just like your main tool right the camera's now. like my main tool right now it's like the thing i'm so invested in right now and i was like working on working on it my plan, my plan is to 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 by um by April, my birthday anyway, to get um, uh, Adobe Premiere and uh, Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom mm. to edit all my photos and edit my videos, and it's just a way better editor. It's like professional editor, so that'll be a lot more fun to use for, that's, the, for the upcoming year. That's a great goal, and it's uh it's super important when you're like so. There's a difference between like having a job and having a, a hobby that you're trying to monetize, which yeah. is what I'd call this, probably. Yeah, because by uh, but by the time my birthday rolls around, that'll be like a year. Yeah. Since we started since doing. Since you started doing it. Doing doing the podcast anyway, for sure. Wicked. Yeah. Um. Oh, what was I gonna say? Uh. Ah, uh, yeah, but like it, 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 it's it's very no 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 it's very nice to be able to invest in your hobby 
because it doesn't yeah. feel like has much of a like it it feels like more of an investment than spending money mm-hmm. it's like oh i'm ge- i'm really getting something out of this and that that's going to be really sweet for you yeah something uh so like my hobbies right now mainly consist of like physical activity getting outside and, and whatnot um but something i've been just so like hear me smack my head against on it because i'm just aching to fucking make music Mm, lately yeah. and buy some software which i can do that and my friend brought home some turntables and i just couldn't i'd probably spend about fucking eight hours trying to get these things to work and uh and soon probably around that same april may june time i'm going to be able to buy some of my own equipment and and start you know getting into my hobby it's going to be just super exciting yeah nice yeah yeah hobbies is fun it's nice to get out there because I, I i didn't used to have a lot to do but it is nice it, it took it. I was pretty reluctant to actually get out and to go take photos, especially mm. by myself for some reason. But especially because I didn't know how to use the camera, mm. so every photo I took fucking sucked. And that yeah. was like, I don't know shit. My suck. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. So, so now I'm actually, but I'm, I'm actually taking some good photos, and it is fun going out there. Yeah. And it's just I got. I feel like I I learn something every time. So that's so that's nice. It's it's rewarding, isn't it? Yeah, it's very rewarding. It's super rewarding. And you know what? I'm gonna I, something I wanted to touch on was. Uh, so I've been listening to a lot. I really like Jordan Peterson. Uh, I read his book, Tw- yeah, uh, 12 Rules for Life and Antidote for Chaos. I listen to a ton of his stuff online. I'm also listening to an audiobook called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by a guy named Mark Manson, who I've read another one of his books, which is called Models. Uh, so authors I really, really like. And uh, a common theme that's in both those books that I just mentioned, not models, uh, is you know picking your suffering. And, you know, some of the things they're talking about is, is the reward that comes after struggle. And it is so frustrating, you know, when you're excited to start something new, like, say, making music, like, say, photography, and you've kind of envisioned this this world in your head where you're going to take these beautiful pictures and they're going to get a thousand likes on Instagram or you're going to make this song and people are going to love it. And the reality is you start this program and you just know less than nothing Hmm. you don't know what you don't know and it's it's hard you you get hard on yourself about it you get hard on the situation some people quit right away yeah and and i think the quit right away point all all the point i'm trying to make is that's how you figure out you choose your suffering Mm -hmm. is it worth suffering for yeah yeah no straight up when you first opening that that video right there for the first time it's pretty overwhelming mm -hmm. especially when you don't know anything but when when it was me for the first time Mm -hmm. i started to know i used i started using shotcut and i started getting familiar with that and i made a few videos and then uh, it start, it's just started like malfunctioning, so I had to move to DaVinci Resolve, and then starting to learn that new, new over would fucking suck. Learning that all over again was, uh, was annoying, so it took me a while to make better videos. But then going to this other one, this new one, will have like so many new features, so it's gonna be kind of definitely be overwhelming when I eventually get it. Mm-hmm. And then learning Photoshop and Lightroom will be something else that are, that are totally different that I've never touched on before. Yeah. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff to learn. Yeah, for sure, and it's to- totally overwhelming. Even and the most even the most basic thing recently with my camera, I learned um, while I, while I was filming the Barsby season all season, I filmed it in thirty frames a second mm-hmm. on my camera, which I can I'm totally able to frame it to film at 60 frames a second on my camera and a lot of the time I was like really unhappy with some of my quality image because I just didn't know how to use my camera right so I so when I learned that I could use 60 frames a second and how to actually switch it I was felt like such a dumbass but uh yeah I'm able to do that and get some really way better images now yeah and just and just and just learning that it was it's just so it's like the best thing ever yeah it, it, that's kind of what I've been going off of is like the reward of it yeah it's like it won't be rewarding if it's something that isn't really worth suffering for yeah on that note we're actually gonna take a quick break and I'm gonna switch over to a, a, a different frame rate and I'm gonna get it fucking smeared off ice because I'm thirsty as shit cool we're back with new drinks you got, you got your drink there yeah, yeah perfect it's actually could you top me up all right it's on camera, so he has to do it. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have done it. I love smearing off ice, guys. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of people make fun of me for smearing off ice, but I just love it. They're like, "Are you gonna drink the whole thing in like five seconds?" I'm like, "No, I'm just gonna." Yeah, it, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Everyone like delicious. It seems like everyone only drinks it to get iced, which I guess I've never, I've never been, iced. I've never been iced before because I'm simply not cool enough. Sometimes when I drink it, just to sip it, like stings my jaw like a electric like I'm getting electrocuted in an electric chair I don't know how people do so it so I, I don't want to ice myself that's uh, that's just too much but it is ice delicious em. to drink ice them mmm Zootopia mm. yes love this I was so thirsty um 
Another thing we did while we were here, what we did, we, we hit the bag, we hung out, we, uh, we, we had some drinks, that was fun. Yeah. We, we had that for dinner, and uh, we also went to the best toy store I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, it's called Toy Traders in Langley. Toy Traders in Langley. Mm-hmm. It was the best. Yeah, it, it's just ginormous. Like, no amount of Google reviews or pictures could have prepared us for walking into that thing, because as soon as you walk in, it's just this magical Star Wars display. Mm-hmm. And it's like that toy store from Home Alone 2. Yeah. In New York, when mm-hmm. it's just the best thing you've ever seen in your life. It's like that. Mm-hmm. I felt so bad just but like for, for like all the kids walking through that thing, because like I, I kept on hearing like so many kids asking their parents to just buy them everything. Yeah. I'm like, those fucking no poor kids must have just wanted that whole store. I wanted to buy quite a few things myself. Yeah, because like, if, yeah, I almost dropped what could have been with some money, so. Yeah, I, I, I was looking for like, I, I, I do like my action figures. I have a kind of, I do have a small action figure little collection. Fetish. It's, it's kind of fun. It kind of helps me with like cool ideas for storytelling. Logan has like a giant action figure collection. He has this crazy like storybook with his action figures and it, it makes me jealous and I'm like I, I, that's fun and it makes I kind of want to like do we, we kind of thought about doing like stop motion like voice acting for the action figures mm-hmm. and it'd be, just be fun like uh, to make stuff mm-hmm. but action figures are cool yeah and, th- and there were some pretty uh, cool action figures there and they were like pretty reasonably priced yeah and uh, the stuff that I really liked there was like a bunch of cool Transformers some really vintage G.I. Joe's that would have been so cool to play with back in the day when you were a kid. I had some toys, but these toys were the coolest toys ever. Yeah, they had they had a lot of vintage stuff, and they had like a lot of the newer stuff. Mm. Uh, really cool concept. Yeah, they, they had cool concept pieces that were just like, oh, okay, that's neat. Like their statues, like their all their statue collections were so cool. I love statues. I'm not a, I would never really buy one, but they're so they're such the art pieces are just amazing. I uh I really thought it was nice the employees just like really understood like how special it was for people being in there mm-hmm. like because we had he had his big camera and i was pulling out my phone and there are people recording everything and you know obviously some people kind of get in the way of other people yeah. and just kind of seemed like everyone understood that like wow this is like the best thing we have the chance to look at right now so amazing. no one seemed to give a hoot it was awesome yeah and we talked to this one guy who like told us about the owner apparently those gi joes were like his personal collection and, um, yeah, he let me record, like, a bunch of stuff with Transformers, and there's, like, there's, there's this Battle of Hoth scene, and there's, like, the there's this big, big DC Universe scene with mm-hmm. the, the Teen Titan Tower getting, like, split so in half. So cool. So cool. And there's the Hall of Justice and other stuff that I didn't get, but the Hoth battle was cool. There was other G.I. Joe battles. Um, like, there was, like, Alien and Predator stuff and, mm-hmm. and Arnold Schwarzenegger everywhere. Yeah. I love all that stuff, so I really... Oh, it was so cool. Yeah. And then all the action figures were just so cool. I wanted to buy some. Yeah, and that kind of... Uh, that, everybody was so nice, you're right. Yeah, that that set the tone for the trip, for sure. Because yeah. that was, like, right off the, off the bat, got you off the ferry. And, yeah, that was um, fun. Just went right to the toy store, and it's been somewhere I've been meaning to go for a while. Then it kind of inspired us to do an activity last night. We went and saw uh, Aquaman at the IMAX theater, although we didn't see it in IMAX. We saw it in just real D 3D. Aquaman! And, uh, yeah, it sucked. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> yeah, it, I thought it sucked. Yeah. There was some, like, okay, nearly, there were some cool concepts at the end, and there were some cool, really cool visuals at the end. Yeah. But I didn't like the first half at all at all i just especially like uh, as a whole of the movie i just didn't really like aquaman's character he's i was like, gonna ki- say he's kind of like this this like dumb renegade motorbike driver is yeah. kind of this guy vibe i get from him and I'm i just... don't mind jason momoa oh i, I like the really, actor yeah but i don't really like what they did with aquaman for the most some parts yeah like, some of some of it really worked some but of I it's didn't funny like yeah how like how like that opening scene in the submarine i hated yeah was, so him bad. lifting the submarine out of the ocean was dope but the, he like he looked over his shoulder like probably like probably like a, like seven times in the movie like there was the waterfall shot there was where he was like in the summer he looked over his shoulder it was just I didn't like that that was dumb and then it made that stupid sound effect every time like Dun-dun-dun. yeah yeah the yeah. Mu- the music was like cool for that first bit and then they overdid it the music um, really like gave me a headache honestly it was just so like it was so Lord of the Ringsy and it was just a li- it was just too much Lord of the Ringsy and the and the sounds were like. 
some of the sound effects were like so like si- so like uh, Star Trekky or like Star Wars. I just uh, I just felt like you got the I don't know if this is like almost me imagining it I in got my taken head, out of the movie. but like there's just like so many like stupid little guitar riffs that like almost like the most cliche point you could have a guitar riff. Like the guy stares at the camera and like smirks and it's like. Ding! Exactly. Like, no, exactly. Like, That's what I'm off. talking about. Yeah, it was the worst. I hated that part. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's a badass. I get it. Aquaman's badass. And I'm so pretty sure like, it's like always like first scene is just like shirtless Aquaman. Like. Yeah. And I just didn't understand like everybody's motivation. Like Mara in it was dope, but their chemistry was terrible. Yeah, it didn't make sense. It was and like, like why she was here? married to the Ocean Master, who I actually did like Ocean Master. He was just crazy and evil and was well, screaming. he wasn't the Ocean Master yet. And he was just screaming the whole movie, and it was just it was very comic booky, and and that worked for me. And he just looked so cool. The outfits were dope. The costumes in that movie were incredible. Yeah, Ocean incredible. Master was my favorite. And Black Manta looked so cool. Yeah, and the last scene with his mask was just amazing. Uh, uh, Ocean Master's yeah, mask? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. So cool, man. Yeah, the last scene where, like, Ocean Master's fighting in the dark ocean with the lightning and Aquaman's in his fucking gold and green suit was so cool, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, it's sweet. It's kind of like, um... You know, it's a it's a shame that these DC movies are kind of going the way they it are. It was so long. It took so long to get to that sick part of the end. Yeah, the movie was like, uh... Don't get me wrong, I found the fight scenes to be pretty good... Uh, but I'm pretty sure there's like six battle sequences, which most movies typically have three to four. Yeah, there was a lot. So going yeah, on. there was a lot going on. It seemed and that like Black they... Mana one took a long time. Yeah, when they were and they were just like running through buildings and like it's exactly like Fast Five. It's, there... a, it's like a scene ripped right out of Fast Five that we've seen before. There was this one really stupid shot. I don't know if you remember this, but there's uh, two guys on the roof chasing Aquaman. One guy. Or no, chasing Mara. One mm. guy running through the house, and they followed that guy running through the, the house, house for a bit. Exactly. And then they cut to the two guys on the roof. But then they didn't like show the other guy coming out of like the houses, like coming, like continue yeah. to pursue him. Which is like makes sense. Like if you're gonna follow the guy through the house, like have him like cinematically like come through one of the house, like did, explain did, did, did the did route. It, was it like a corner though? Wasn't it like a corner or something? I don't know, but it still just didn't. It didn't vibe with me. It didn't vibe with you. Yeah, I didn't yeah. like it. This thing was just too long. Yeah, and I didn't like Black Manta the way they set up his character and like his dad. They were just evil pirates, and his dad was evil, and they were just so evil together. And, and then Aquaman let him die because he was evil, and and the and he tried to kill Aquaman, and that just backfired, and he's like fuck you, and left. Yeah, and now he's do, like do just so he's mad dead? at Aquaman. Do you think he's dead, Black Manta? Black- Probably not, because Probably not. No way, they shouldn't be killing these people. Yeah. Even though I did not like him, but he was looked cool. Oh, he looks so He looked cool, cool, but he was not very cool, Yeah, personally. Yeah. His lasers were cool, though. I mean, what, what can I say? <laughs> you can't take away the lasers. Yeah. Did Henry Cavill drop out of the DCU? Is that a thing? Uh, Batman. I feel like no. Brad, Brad, Brad Affleck. Affleck did. He's no longer Batman. Oh no. Yeah, he's not Batman anymore. <laughs> There's a Batman movie in development, but we don't know who Batman is going to be. But Matt Reeves is writing it, and he's the guy that made the Planet of the Apes movies, which I really like. So yeah, those I'm movies excited. were sweet. That'll be a really good Batman movie, I'm, James, I'm sure. James Franco, young Bruce Wayne. No thanks. <laughs> but apparently, they're, they're think, apparently there's, there's a lot of talk about Robert Patrick Robertson, the guy from Twilight. Oh, uh, Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Yeah. yeah. Patrick Peterson. I don't think I would like him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's frustrating, right? Like, just build your universe. Like, find people yeah. that are committed to it and it's build tough. it and write it I good. I mean, a Flash movie would have been really cool, but we still haven't got that. Yeah. And it, how about Where is Green Lantern? The, Fuck. Whole, the whole DC. They fucked up. Like, every DC movie I really don't like. It, I, except, except for, for Wonder the Wonder animated Woman, movies. Except for Wonder Woman, I, I, which is not bad. And the mm-hmm. animated movies are amazing. Yeah, we watched The Death of Superman yesterday. Yeah, and The Reign of Superman so is coming awesome. out, and that looks so good. They could do something really good with those DC animated movies. Like, if they like if the way they're going, they went through The Death of Superman, The Reign of Superman, The, the Dark Side was there, they did Throne of Atlantis, there was Teen Titans they've established, they've fought with Slade, they've done a bunch of shit. And, um, and, and the Court of Owls, they've done so much shit. And, uh, what is the other Justice League movie that they did? Uh, oh, Dark, oh, Dark Justice. That was good, too. It always gets me, because with comic books, it seems like you have so much foundation. Yeah. To write something good, and it's just like, why is it The script good? is basically right there, just adapt it. Yeah, exactly. And just... they've, they've done, like, probably, like, ten of these, these DC animated movies right now, and they could keep going, and they make, like, say they make, like, twenty 
of these DC animated movies, and they go through like so many like classic DC storylines. Mm-hmm. They could then they could then keep keep going and then do Injustice. They do all they found they do so much foundational work, and then they do a crazy thing with Superman where he turns evil, and you could believe it because they do done so much foundation work with Lois Lane. Especially, especially that Superman movie that we watched. It's very f- so focused on Superman. Yeah. And none of the other like DC anime movies really ever were. Yeah. And it's really good. It makes you like Superman a lot. Yeah, uh, definitely. A lot of them are. There's a lot of Batman movies. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. Uh, it's basically all Batman movies, and then a few Justice League ones, and then uh, ones that are like Teen Titans. And like I get adapting the script. Like I get some. Of the, I'm not saying like oh it's so easy because like obviously. You're creating something new. You're trying to cater to original audience and, yeah. and make it unique in its own way. Um, but you just have so much good stuff to work so with. So much good stuff. You know, the uh, I'm a pro Marvel guy. Uh, Marvel will always be my thing. But like, just they do because a really you... good job at adapting the script, adapting the comic books. I don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You never and, know. And, and just because, like, I, here's another thing too: is like, you just because you like one thing, you can also like the other thing. And I've kind of adapted that into another thing is like two people can be right about something. Yeah. When I argue with people, I'm like I really try and go with that, and it's like you could you could also be yeah. right about this. Like and DC, I'm so bummed out. It's not awesome because there's so much potential. Like, I want them to be competitive like, with Marvel. When I you was know? watching Aquaman yesterday at the end when the t- when he's fighting Ocean Master, it's like this is what DC is supposed to be like. It's so cool and mm-hmm. mythic and epic. However, it, a lot of the other stuff was just did not work for me. I think but my f- the trench scene was dope, and like how it, like the darkness, like the Zack Snyder vibe when James Wan really got into like the scary vibe and like that big sea monster was really cool. I I liked all those scenes, and another scene I just loved was the uh, the societal storytelling of the rise and fall of Atlantis. That was they did, cool. They did a very good job with the origin of Atlantis and that. All the kingdoms were annoying. But, but to be fair, I really did like that last battle scene where they went to take over the, the crab, crab people. Kingdom. The, the crab, crab people. people. <laughs> yeah, the crab people were cool. And when I had a close-up on that crab guy talking, and it's just I like... I thought it was so funny because I, so I couldn't see it's where so, his mouth was It's moving. like the tiniest little, like, you will never <laughs> take over Atlantis. And it's just like two little tendrils, like, w- talking. It's the funniest thing. And he just I, has black, beady eyes. I was I just was awesome. so happy that, like, kids, here's how... I knew the length of the movie, but I wasn't keeping an eye on the time. I was so scared that, like, they were going to conclude that whole fight scene, take that kingdom, have the whole kingdom, go to wage war on the surface world, and then Aquaman would have to stop them. But fortunately, thank God, Aquaman comes in the middle of that fight scene to interrupt it. And I was like, oh... That would have been so long if you guys did what I thought. And I was like... There was so much in the movie that just, like, did not work for me, though, at the beginning. Volko was kind of weird. Everybody's mo- motivation was really weird. I don't understand why Mare was helping. Everybody was like, I, the whole thing with like the movies about the throne and like royal family and royal blood and shit. I just think it's so dumb because it's all about the king. And then at the end, they're like, "I'll hail the king. He's the king. The queen's." But it was just I don't know. I just hate that shit. Yeah, and it felt very like very much like Thor. Which was done before, or Black Panther, which just happened. It was all about the throne. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just me. But I knew it was gonna be like that. But it just felt very overdone. It felt very Lord of the Ringsy. When like when they were talking about like building the trident, it was just felt like it was just too much. There's a little movie that's just like this is just too much. And when they're flipping around in the ocean with laser beams, I'm like Jesus Christ. There was a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, not a huge fan. Uh... Yeah, I can't really talk about Spider-Verse with you because you haven't seen it, even though it's incredible. Um, But before we conclude the podcast, uh, since we're on the theme of superheroes, there's something that's being created right now that you are so excited about. It's actually holding up our microphone. Oh my god, you're right. As we speak, and I want you to tell us a little bit about that. Uh, It's a comic book you just continually tell me about. One I want to read, just can't. Well, it is is the best thing ever, I'm not going to lie. Best okay. thing ever. Okay, so right now they're developing Invincible animated series, and they're also developing the Invincible movie. And Invincible is awesome. Bruce, can you hold the mic? I can. Can you hold the mic for a sec? Here's Invincible. This is Compendium 2. Invincible is the best comic book ever written. It's by Robert Kirkman, the guy that wrote The Walking Dead. Yep. And um, so, he, for and he made the now like hit, The Walking Dead is like the biggest TV show of like all time almost. As far as, like, TV goes on regular network TV, yeah. Yeah, especially the last five years. 
So uh, they're going to make an animated series of Invincible, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be rated like hard R. Hard R. So it's going to be a lot of kinky sex yeah. scenes. So if you're like a fan of Rick and Morty, it's going to be like it's going to be like there's like maybe like there's going to be fucking crazy violence. Like people are going to be like cutting people's heads off with their own hands. Yeah. There's going to be ripping people's faces apart. It's just nuts. There's going to be people like getting ripped apart in space, and their guts are going to be floating in space. It's just gnarly, and um, and it's really funny too. And Seth Rogen is writing and like and, and uh, developing it with another guy who I forget his name, mm-hmm. and he's also working on the movie, and and he's gonna voice one of the main characters. Nice. So it's it's gonna be funny, and it's gonna be just awesome. I think. And that's and, all available on Amazon. And it's gonna be an Amazon an Amazon uh, an Amazon uh, original. Nice. Yeah, and Glenn is gonna be invincible, the main character. Glenn from The Walking Dead. The Stephen Walking Ewan. Dead. To Stephen Yeun. Yeah. Nice. Sorry, fucked that up a little bit. It's all good. Yeah, and then. Uh, his mom is also going to be the Sandra Cho, Sandra Ho, O oh, from uh, from Grey's Anatomy, and that's cool. Yeah. And then his dad is going to be J.K. Simmons, hmm. and that's pretty cool casting. The cast is really good, really, really good. Yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of cartoons and animated things, so yeah. I'm excited to watch it. I still want to read the comic books, but you know I haven't. So you should definitely read it. It's so good. It's just big one bit one big long story, and it's like. Just the best superhero story, like, really ever written. He just goes through so many arcs. He learns so many lessons. It's just, like, it's just the best life, like, just so many life stories and superhero stories, like, inter- intertwine. Yeah. Yeah, so much heroism and, like, friendship, and, and it is funny. It's one of the funnier comic books I've ever read. There's lots of fun stuff. It makes fun of itself. It makes fun of, like, all comic book stuff if, if you're a fan of other comic book stuff. It's so fun. It has the Justice League. They make fun of the Justice League. They kill all the, the whole Justice League. It's so good. I can't wait for the third compendium. I haven't read the whole series yet, but I'm about to... I'm going to finish it soon. I'm Logan gonna... has the third compendium? No, I have it at my house. Oh, nice. Yeah, he gave it to me. It is his, though. Yeah, he's the best. Nice. Yeah, he loves Invincible. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I just wrapped up. Just wrapped up the combo, just wrapped up, and... Uh... Oh, man. Yeah, they're going to make these movies, and it's going to be so dope. <laughs> it's gonna be the, it's, it could be like the Game of Thrones of superhero movies. That's exciting. Yeah, it's going to be just a long story... I haven't watched Game of Thrones yet. I've been waiting until it's all made, and then I'm going to watch it. The first season is going to be eight episodes, and they're all going to be an hour long, I think. Yeah. It's so hard Which to is find, really cool. It's so hard to find the time to watch all these shows. Mm-hmm. It but is. It's also difficult to, like, not watch the shit you've already seen. Yeah, it and, is. And it's, like, especially, because, like, I'm on this, like, sorry if I keep talking. It's hard to pay it. attention to stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, that's it. Whenever I watch something new, it's, like... Am I talking to anyone on my cell phone? Because I don't want to be talking to yeah. anyone. I want to be fully paying attention. And then also, is like when you watch something that... So, like, I've been watching a few episodes of How I Met Your Mother recently. And I'm like, holy fuck. Like, I'm just appreciating the show in a whole nother, like, dimension of writing. Like, I'm just seeing so yeah. much better storytelling from it. And it's just like, well, you know, if you can watch something two years apart and gain tif- different perspective, are you really watching the same thing? Last night when we watched Rick and Morty, I appreciated so much more of so some funny. a few of the episodes that I was watching. And I'm like, I didn't even realize this. This is this is good, some good shit. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Like Game of Thrones is an investment. I want to watch that, but there's a lot of Game of Thrones. I, I'm yeah. It's been nice waiting for all of that. Um, I, it's funny. I've never been like spoiled by anything. Like Cartoons I've seen tons of quick spoilers. And easy. Yeah, cartoons are require a shorter sp- attention span. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about mm-hmm. it. Of which I have an extremely short one. Mm-hmm. But I love cartoons. It's well worth it. Definitely watch Invincible when it comes out. It's the best. Read it, though. Read it. It's the best. You gotta read it, too. I want to talk to people about it. It's the best. I can only talk to Logan about it. But it's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's basically going to wrap it up. Yep. This is a fun Stratocast. Oh, but I did. But I did want to talk about when we're talking about toys. The next Stratocast, I'm gonna. It's gonna be with Logan, and, and the, actually, the the New York Toy Fair is going on right now. Mm-hmm. And Logan loves toys. He's the toy guy, and I, I really do like toys myself. I'm not an expert though, but I do love them. I can really appreciate uh, the sculptures, and I love the toys. The toys, some of the toys are so fucking cool. Yep. And we're just gonna like, kind of review the toy, the toy fair, and what they reveal, and we're gonna just say how dope they are, and just kind of talk about toys. Well, I'll be watching it. There you go. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun anyway, and that's, the, and that's the next Stratocast, and that'll be number 20, I think. I think this is 19. <laughs> yeah. 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 20 episodes, one year. Yeah. Hopefully a few more. Yeah, a few more. By the time of April. Nice. That'd be, that'd be dope. Nice. Nice. All right, give them the guns. We've had, I'm out of here. Had a blast. Peace out, guys.